this is your year nine half term three topic overview that contains core knowledge. The topic is called the living world and the key things we'll be looking at are ecosystems and tropical rainforests. Your homework will be at the end of this video. So this is an example of a typical pond ecosystem that contains a range of biotic and abiotic factors, uh, features. Abiotic would be the water or the rocks because they're not living, whereas bio biotic factors, think of biology, would be the plants and any animals in this ecosystem. Now, within ecosystems, there are food chains. A food chain basically shows the transfer of energy from the sun all the way up to the predator. So, first of all, we have got vegetation or grass. These are producers. They photosynthesize and make energy from the sun. These are eaten by primary consumers. Note how the arrow points to the primary consumer. This is basically the transfer of energy and is really important. Primary consumers, herbivores, tend to be eaten by omnivores or carnivores. So the secondary consumer in this food chain is a bluebird. This energy continues to be transferred until we get to tertiary consumers and predators, or in this case, the very top of the food chain, the apex, the apex, predator, apex, predator, sorry. Okay, uh, once these animals die, or when they excrete material through wee or poo, all right, this material goes back into the soil, and it is decomposed. Decomposers include fungus, fungi, such as mushrooms, and things like worms that break down the material so the producers can absorb it and the cycle changes. It goes all around again, and this is sometimes called nutrient cycling. On a larger scale, we have biomes all across the world. A biome is basically a large ecosystem where fauna and flora, animals and plants are the same, and these tend to form in bands across the world. So for example, we've got hot deserts here and we've got tropical rainforests here around the equator. We live in a temperate deciduous forest and what happens here is in the winter, the trees lose their leaves to protect them from the cold. All right, a major biome we look at is the tropical rainforest biome or the equatorial rainforest that is found on the equator with the main the biggest one in the world being the amazon rainforest in south america this climate graph is typical of the tropical rainforest you can see the bars represent high amounts of precipitation and you can see the temperature which is fairly stable throughout the year represents high temperatures on average, tropical rainforests will have 2,000 to up to 3,000 millimetres of rainfall per year. This shows the structure of the rainforest. So in the rainforest, there are four levels. The first level is pretty dark. It doesn't receive much sunlight. And this is called the shrub layer, okay, or the forest floor. Moving up, we then have the under canopy. And this is where you will find tall straight tree trunks so the trees are shooting up to get as much sunlight as possible. The busiest and most biodiverse layer of the rainforest is the canopy and finally the tallest and strongest trees that can endure the extreme sunlight and heat and heavy precipitation are called the emergence and they can grow up to 15 metres in height. Fauna uh, flora, sorry, in the tropical rainforest. Plants have adapted to the extreme conditions in the tropical rainforest. One example is a drip tip leaf. As you can see, the end of the leaf has got a drip tip so the water can drain away quickly. This stops the drip tip, the, the leaf breaking or decomposing due to it being covered in water. Another example are epiphytes. Epiphytes are basically plants that live on other plants and they have adapted to get their nutrients from the air and not from the soil. Finally we have buttress roots, these huge roots offer stability for the very tall trees. They also have a very large surface area which is demonstrated with these ridges to encourage gas exchange and help them photosynthesize uh, effectively. In terms of fauna then, animal adaptations we have got the sloth, 
that move very, very slowly around the rainforest so it doesn't get spotted by predators. We have got spider monkeys that have got incredibly strong arms that help it swing through the rainforest. And my personal favourite, we have got the toucan that's got a large honeycomb beak, uh, beak that is really colourful. So not only is it lightweight, it also helps it attract a mate. Causes of deforestation. Sadly, the world's tropical rainforests are being rapidly destroyed for a number of reasons, okay? And generally, these are for economic opportunities to make money. One example is we have mining. This devastates the rainforests. Chemicals from the mining industry seep into the water table and also it scars the landscape. The biggest cause of deforestation is actually cattle farming. So when you're enjoying your lovely Big Mac, Whopper, etc., think about the rainforest that's been destroyed to farm the cows for you. Another example is road construction, and these roads help connect different areas of the rainforest. The problem is the more roads that build, the more access people have got to uh, the rainforest, so deforestation. Uh, speed increases and finally we've got HEP hydroelectric power areas of the rainforest are flooded in order to generate electricity what are the impacts of this well the first impact is soil erosion the super fertile topsoil has been eroded away and it's left this red infertile soil known as lattice soil another negative impact is climate change trees are natural carbon sinks as we cut the trees down, this carbon is released back into the atmosphere, especially when slash and burn deforestation techniques are used. There are, however, economic opportunities. It's not all bad. A lot of money and economic development is made from deforestation. A final negative impact, animal species are being wiped out and extinction occurs every single day. How can we manage this sustainably? First is international organisations such as the ITTO, the International Tropical Timber Organisation, and the FSC, which is the Forest Stewardship Council. Both of these organisations work with uh, people in the rainforests and governments to ensure that any deforestation that takes place is sustainable. Things they will encourage are practices such as selective logging. Rather than wiping out the whole rainforest, loggers choose the tree they want. It is marked, cut down, and then replanted. Another example is ecotourism and education. People who visit the rainforest are educated on the importance and how to manage the rainforest successfully. And there is also conservation, protection, preservation of the rainforest. Now, you have got three tasks to choose from, and this, the work you complete needs to be submitted to your teacher on Teams. The first one, find an ecosystem near you, pond, field, woods, you could go to Samoa Valley, take some photographs, and make a poster. The second example is pick a major biome. Don't choose rainforest, because you'll know all about that from lessons. Maybe try cold environments such as tundra or polar or hot deserts. And create a fact file, or finally, Pick one of the rainforests in the world, not the Amazon, and create a fact file including location, climate, plants and animals. Hope you enjoy the task.